And they all said together, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We'll talk from the title today, Will You Be Clean? Will you be clean? Will you be clean? Be clean. To be clean is a mandate and it is possible. To be clean is a mandate. And it is possible. And just for a second, I want to digress in the message and speak to those that are out there and watching this video or this, this feed, especially those of you that are part of Dove Church, be at church. They even write me and let me know they listening and watching and stuff. I want to watch you up close and personal. Be clean. Clean is defined as simply as being free from debris or whatever is injurious or offensive. Free from debris or whatever is injurious or offensive. Cleaning carries wide and varied levels. Cleaning. However, we will concentrate on cleansing for the believer. We will speak to types of cleansing that affect the body and the soul. Will you be clean? Turn quickly to Matthew 8, verses 1 through 3. Matthew. And it said there, when he had come down from the mountain, he being Jesus, great multitudes followed him. And behold, a leper came and worshiped him and saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Then Jesus put out his hand and touched him saying, I am willing. Be cleansed. Immediately, his leprosy was cleansed. How soon did it happen? Immediately. This leprous man, leprous man rather, equated healing with a cleansing. Some people would ask Jesus, or Jesus would ask them, do you want to be made whole? But in this case, the man wanted to be clean. He was a leper. And I kept thinking about it, and I said, what's the difference between healing and cleaning? And Cleansing was the level of healing that he needed. Because of the, the nature of the disease that he had. See, some things can get a light touch up while some things need a heavy duty cleaning. I mean, no, I'm right about that. You can go through your house and you say, okay, I really got to do something different here. To
that I just can't straighten up everything. We got to. was greater than the AIDS of our day. Where anybody that had leprosy, the flesh after a while changed colors and it looked And so he made an appeal to Jesus. Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. The question is, will you ask? Do you want to be made clean? You know, are you, are you willing to say, I want to be clean? If you don't mind, can you work that out for me? I want to be better. Can you help me with that? There are a few things that activate a request to Jesus. Worship and faith are two of them. Because if we look back up, the first thing the man did is before he made the request, he worshipped him. Oh, God. Although awkwardly worded, the leprous man request lined up with Jesus' purpose. It lined up with Jesus' purpose. Luke 418 gives us that purpose. It lined up with Jesus' purpose. Then I'm going to get back down to that worship in a minute. Luke 14 says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he, God, has anointed me, Jesus, to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captive and the recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. But it's already my job description. I'm willing. Yeah. And been authorized to do this. Yeah. So when you come to Jesus, he's already authorized to take care of your situation. Yeah. He's already authorized to set at liberty those who are captive. Even if the captivity, the captor's name is leprosy. Yeah. Whatever the name of the captor is, he can handle. He minds, but he's not bothered. Is that good? Then the fact that this man worshipped him. He worshipped him while making his request. He worshipped him while making his request. Usually people will worship Jesus after he has done something. They fell. When they saw a miracle, they fell down and worshipped him. And then they proclaimed, you are Lord and you are the Son of God. What if we just worship him before we got what we needed? But also, worship is an open door. It's a good place to make your request known. Come on, come on, come on. I know worship is for him, but, but, but God is saying, I don't mind. I, I don't mind. I don't mind. Talk to me while, while, while we're in this intimate setting together. Start making your requests known. Now, don't spend all the time just requesting. Spend some time thinking. But, but while you're there, just say, oh, by the way, Jesus, I have a few issues, if you don't mind. Does it make sense? Are you out there? 
See, while you're in between the praise and your hand is up, you, let's not pretend that your mind don't wander, don't wander to your troubles and your situation and, and what you walked away from and what you living in and what's going on in your life. And I, I, I'm preaching in something today, but I'm still up here. Be be because he doesn't mind. <laughs> are you there? We, we are excuseless when it comes to worshiping him. Because you're crazy if you don't take advantage of an open door. It's not just an exercise. It is a way through. And when you dare enter in, and you stand in his presence. First of all, in his presence is fullness. Well, why would you stand in a full place and not get full? Come on, come on, come on, come on. Tell them when you tell somebody when you're standing in a full place. Get you some stuff. Give God a praise. Hallelujah. Come on, don't, don't just stand there looking at me waiting on the next thing to happen. Or who's going to get excited? Who's going to shout the loudest? Who's going who gonna to show the most emotion? You know, it, it's about that time that you need to get you some. <laughs> That's why you're not crazy. You enter into his gates with thanksgiving. And you enter into his gates with. Uh, be thankful unto him and. For the Lord is. And his mercy is. And his truth endures to. You, you, you. you I, what's wrong with you? You in a good place. Yeah, it might be on you, but it, it, you, you got an option here. <laughs> And sometimes we need to serve notice on the devil and tell him, you're not my only option today. I know you think you're my option, but you're, uh, you're an alternative, but you're not the option. I got a choice in the matter. And today I choose to. I choose to worship him. I choose to get my hand up on him. Bend something up. Do something because I'm in a place of fullness. No, it, it hasn't even it hadn't even hit you yet how blessed you are. See, when 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 it was Moses' time, and I'm all off my stuff, Jesus Christ. Only one person could go up on the mountain. But we have a God that invites us, come to the fountain. C come closer. Come in. Come close enough for me to lend an ear to you. Come close enough for me to listen. Come close. Don't stand far off. People that are scared of fire sit at the back of the church. But come close so you can see and you can hear. Because he might want to whisper something to you. And what will he say? I don't know, but it'll sound like an option to me. It, it'll sound like you can make it. You can, you can overcome it. You can get out of this. It, it's only for a season. If you hold out, joy is coming. <laughs> Are y'all there today? If you could just make yourself say, I'm going to last. Until daybreak. <laughs> Come on, give him a praise, Eddie. <laughs> uh, 
I'm going to be like Jacob and I'm going to wrestle this blessing out of you. You may knock my hip out of joint, but I'm going to limp away with the blessing. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. But I'm going to battle and I'm going to wage this thing and we're going to wrestle it all night long. And some of you in a wrestling match, but that's all right. You're getting clean. Will you be clean? Because when you get up, you're going to be different than when you entered in. Will you be clean? Or oh, somebody going to get this today. Worship, again, is a good place to make your request known unto God. When this man worshiped Jesus, he honored him in advance of. Sometimes we need to honor him in advance of. All right. Not after the diagnosis is here. He knew he was already sick. He didn't have to announce to him what was going on with him. So he said, I'm going to worship him. But I got a request. Why does this leprous man know to honor Jesus? It was based on what he believed about the Messiah. And what the prophets had said and recorded about what he would do. He was leprous, but he was a Jew. So at some point, while he wasn't sick, he understood the customs of his culture and his time. So he had information about the Messiah. And sometimes all you need to do is connect the dots. And that's why when Jesus would manifest himself to people, they would say, Lord and Messiah, this is who you are. You are the son of God. How do they know? Because the facts line up. When he get here, he's going to do this. Now, before Jesus read his resume, Isaiah had already posted it. He posted it 700 years early. So Jesus picked up where Isaiah had posted it in the temple and he read it and then he closed the book and sat down and he said, today this hearing is fulfilled. This is fulfilled in your hearing. That means what the prophet said 700 years ago is standing before you right now. Does this make sense? No doubt the activity of Jesus was noised about in cities and towns. This man heard stories that made its way into a secluded area of the city called a leper colony where stuff wasn't supposed to get in. But there is no place where God won't come to reach you. I don't care how bad it is. He can find you. In those places. Here he is down in the leper car where the lepers live. In that day, if you were diagnosed with leprosy, you were shunned and banished to one area where the populace were not. It was highly contagious again. If a leper moved through the city or town, they had to stand so many feet away from everybody and cry out, unclean, unclean. How many of you, if some stuff was really known about you, you'd have to stand way off and holler. So this man risked life and limb to run through the crowd. We don't get his, his unclean, but because I've read other scriptures and I understand what, 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 the, what the dictate was, what the, what, the, what the order was for leprous people. Because once they got clean, they needed to show themselves to the priest. So they had to risk it again. No, you were a leper. But once you got clean, you could go show yourself to the priest.
But this man didn't go to that priest. He went to the priest. See, it's only some things you need to take to. And not all the other places. And so he found it. This man's faith made him risk life and limb to come into a crowd and make a faith-filled request of Jesus. And Jesus responded by doing something that was non-traditional and that he was not supposed to do because when the man came to Jesus, he was a stinking, flesh-rotting leper. Stinking, flesh-rotting. Leper. Then Jesus made the crowd go, woo. All he did was he put his hands on him. Jesus is not afraid to touch you where you are. In the midst of your stuff. And it didn't say that he held his, his nose. Yeah. Tell him the address is 4660. <laughs> 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 then proceed on the route. Yeah. Somebody's phone just went off if you're in, in video land and, and not understanding what we're doing here. Uh, so he, he, he reached out his hand and he touched him. He wasn't supposed to touch him, but see, unless he touched him, he couldn't fulfill the request. Come on. Thank God that, 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 that Jesus will, will break a dumb rule to heal you. He did it before. He healed somebody on the Sabbath day. He wasn't supposed to, but he said, let me be clear. The, the, the Sabbath was made for man, yeah. not vice versa. Yeah. See, see, so he touched him. And in touching him, he was saying, you don't stink too bad. I'm not, I'm not afraid of catching nothing. Yeah. And he laid, he said, I will. I'm willing to heal. And immediately, he was healed. Here is the blessing. Our body and our souls are cleansed by the same Jesus. In spite of him not being here in his natural body, John 1 and 1 and 2, and I'm rushing on, says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning. So before Jesus uh, had a body, he was the word. Then in his body, he was the word incarnate. Because John 1 and 14 says, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as the only begotten of the Father. He was full of grace and... Come on, come on, come on. So that's in his body. Then, 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 then Jesus, when he was talking in, in the next chapter, 15 and 3, he said, you are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. So the word declares you're clean by the word I speak to you. So in the absence of his body, you are still clean. If you Use the word. Why is, 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 is cleansing necessary? Well, I'm going to use a passage that, 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 that Paul used to relate to, to the church and marriage. But, but here it is, Ephesians 5, 25 through 27. And it tells us, husband, love your wives. Just as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her. Now, that's a whole message in itself. It ain't if loving you is wrong, I don't want to do right. That, that ain't what we're talking about. That's just an upside down song. But 
But the truth is, husband, love your wife just as Christ also loved the church. And gave, meaning that you're a lover so much you die for. But that's not that message. But here comes the message, the part that, that is apropos to this application. That he might sanctify and cleanse her. Who is he talking about? The church. With the washing of water by the what? So he, he, he calls the word water. So when you use the word, you are taking a good wash up. You are taking a good bath. And people that don't like the word part of church, that means you don't want to get clean. You want to be happy and nasty, but you don't want to be clean. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I, help me, help me. You shouting and happy, but just as nasty as you can be. But come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. And when the word coming on, you turn off. Because, but that's when the water start hitting you. You ought to hear splish splash all around you right now. Splish flash, I was taken aback. Long about Sunday morning. <laughs> that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the, by the word. That, and, and once you are washed, he says, you presentable. That he might, Jesus might, present her to himself. First, he washes you, and then he said, come on to me. While this looks like one event, it's two separate events. He's spending time washing you. And when he comes back, he said, I'm going to present you to me. Do you get it? A glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she would be holy and without blemish. She without, because before she came to me, I washed her. Will you be made clean? She is without blemish. That's because she came to me, I got the eraser and blotted out some stuff. Will you be made clean? See, see, see. So, so, uh, you can clean through the word I'm speaking right now. And I'm asking, will you be made clean? Uh, bend your ear down, let me get back there. <laughs> come on, come on. Will you be made clean? Jesus in his body touched and spoke. But Jesus, the word out of the body, uses a key cleansing agent. He uses the water of the word. But he got a cleansing agent that, 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 that lines up with the word. Revelations 1 and 5 said, And Jesus, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, the firstborn from the dead. That means other people got up, but he is really the firstborn of the dead that stayed up. Lazarus got back up. So many other ones that died got back up, but they died again. So Jesus is the legitimate firstborn of the dead. Because when he got up, he walked out. And after he got through walking, he went up and took his body with him. He is the firstborn from the dead. And the ruler over the kings of the earth. I don't care who in the White House, he's the ruler over the kings of the earth. I don't care who's over Russia, who's over China, who's over Korea. He is the king. He's over all the kings. So when you want to get sideways, 
almost said something bad. Let me finish reading. To him who loved us. Everybody read that with me. To him and read those next two words. Stop, stop, don't, don't, don't keep going. To him who loved us and next two words. Why did he wash us? Go back. Because he loved us. From our sins in his own blood. So while the water of the word washes, the tide of the word is the blood. It's got a double agent inside of it. Isn't it? The word is cleansing, but it can't come unless it's with some blood. <laughs> so every time you hear preaching, you ought, to, you ought to get glad. You hear water and you say, I know there's some blood. Yeah. Or you ought to just break out and start singing, I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. See, see, I, I did. <laughs> Every time he loves you enough to send you to a preacher so that he can preach to you the word so you can get washed up again. You ought to say, I got bloody again today. But I'm not red, I'm white. That means some blemishes are leaving and some wrinkles are straightening out. We, we, we got some wrinkles we need straightened out. And they're not on the outside, they're in our soul. We, we, we need some blots and some stuff come. And so, so this is for the soul part. He, he, he left, he washes us on the inside and, and he gets rid of blots on the inside. All you have to do is hearken to his word and he'll help you. I want to change how you objectify the word, how you look at the word. It ain't just something I listen to. It's something coming to clean my ear out. Clean my heart out. Clean my soul out. So that when he comes back, I'm presentable. Isn't that amazing that the one that wants you to be presentable is the one that cleans you. You go to a restaurant and you get a dirty glass, you don't clean it. But Jesus loves you enough to hedge the bet, to cheat on the test and say, I'm going to wash you up and then say, come here. Do you get it? You are without an excuse. What's wrong? He's doing the cleaning. All you have to do is stand there. I think about, I'm going to talk about my grandbaby a little bit. Sometimes when I go to clean her nose, this is, this is how the church does it. Sometimes I go to clean her nose because she'll sneeze and, 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 and stuff go to running out. And, uh, 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 and, I, and I go to clean her nose, and, and she, she, she don't want it clean. And, and, and when, 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 when I bring the towel up close by to her, she, 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 and we put it down, and, and, and I think she knows her nose is a mess. <laughs> she kind of, you know, she, she figures it out, you know. Yeah, and she, she kind of do like this, and she breathes, uh, trying, to, trying to breathe through snot. Sometimes we try to breathe underwater when God's trying to clear us out so that we can breathe good. And, and get rid of some stuff in yeah. God. Yeah. So, so you can be better and you yeah. you sitting up with a snotty nose can't breathe because you're too hungry to let somebody clean it out. And, yeah. and so when we bring the rag, the first thing she do is turn her head and she can really turn it away and get it. It's almost she does the owl on us and turn it all the way around. Or, <laughs> But you know what? He pursues us just like I pursue her. And we don't care which way you turn. 
I'm going to present you because I died for you. And I'm going to keep washing you while you're standing there doing this. And this is what the church does while he's trying to clean you up. You, you fighting him. I don't need this. I don't need that. And he says, stand still. I got to get that last wrinkle out. I got to straighten some stuff out. And you're running and say, but no, it's okay. <laughs> These wrinkles is fine. They are not fine. The blemishes are not fine. Because one day, you got to be presentable. And if he come to get the wrinkle out, the wrinkle is not presentable. If he come to get the blemish out, the blemish is not acceptable. Does that make sense? Why you want to live with a blemish? Trauma? Why you want to live with one? You, you, why you want to live with one? And you know it's a blemish. What, you want to be clean? No one exempt from the process of cleansing. Not you or me. There is no other way. It must be done. It has to be done. What is our goal? To reside in the word. Saturated, abide in prayer. To, to abide in the words, saturated, abiding place. To reside in the words, saturated, abiding place. I'm going to say that one more time. To reside in the words, saturated, abiding place. That is your goal. That's your goal. You got to get to a place that this is where you live. Yes. This is home. Yes. And everything else is a foreign country. This is home for me. Then John 15, 7 through 8 talks about what I just made in this statement. And it says, says if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. By this, my Father is glorified, that you hear, that you bear, rather, much fruit. It's where you're living that determines what you're bearing. You want to bear something? Reside someplace. And if you won't live there, you won't bear much. But if you abide in me and my word abide in you, then you shall ask what you will. And it shall be done for you. Where are you living today? Will you be made clean? Blessings to you today. All over this room, we thank you, God, that you love us enough to tell us the truth about who we are and where we are. And we repent of sin and we pray for mercy today. That we learn to stand in washing places. And submit ourselves to washing places. 
submit ourselves to being watered and covered in blood. Because it's just blood that washes us white. Gets rid of blemishes and stains. Because one day, Jesus, we want to be presentable to you. Because you died for us. So we thank you. And we bless you. And so in advance of what you are about to do. In advance of what you're about to do. Raise your hands and begin to worship him. All over this room. Worship him. Come on, church. Hallelujah. In advance. In advance of him laying his hand on you. He does mind, but he's okay with it. Because he's mindful of you. He does mind. I'm glad he minds today. I'm glad he minds today. Hallelujah. 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 God, yeah, today, God, yeah, today, God. I need a washing. I need a washing. Hallelujah. I need a washing, God. Thank you. Thank you that I'm cleansed through the words you spoke. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Amen. 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 Now give him a praise of gratitude. Come on, put your hands Open your mouth. Come on, you can do better than that. Open your mouth. Give him a good praise of gratitude. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You will be presentable. You will be presentable. We will be presentable. We will be presentable. Hallelujah. Thank you. Let's prepare for communion. 